Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. Later on in the show, we'll show you how Fiat came up with a noise generator for electric cars that really seems to grab the attention of leader dogs for the blind. But now, let's get to the news. The EPA released fuel economy ratings for the 2014 BMW 328D, and the D, of course, stands for diesel. The rear drive version gets a rating of 32 miles per gallon in the city and 45 on the freeway, while the all-wheel drive version is rated at 31 city, and 43 highway. Those are pretty impressive numbers. According to Wards, so far this year, BMW has sold nearly 2,500 diesel-powered vehicles in the U.S. market, compared to 880 hybrids. Speaking of BMW, its new i3 electric car, with a structure built primarily of carbon fiber, poses a big challenge for repair facilities most of which have never worked with this material. One thing we noticed is that the body side aperture is made up of 7 to 11 different carbon fiber pieces that are bonded together. The idea is that a body shop would be able to cut out the damaged pieces and glue in new ones rather than try to repair the damaged pieces. As the auto industry adopts new materials and construction techniques, it needs to make sure that the collision repair shops are able to keep up with all these changes. The Volkswagen Group reported its second quarter earnings with very mixed results. Sales were up 6% compared to a year ago. The company sold almost 2.5 million vehicles in that three-month period. That helped revenue shoot up 8.5% to over 52 billion euros. Yet the company's operating profit was up less than 2% and its net profits plummeted by 50% to 2.8 billion euros. VW blames the drop on higher distribution and administrative costs, as well as higher depreciation charges on increased capital expenditures. You know, this is a stunning drop in profitability at a time when most automakers are posting increases. Hyundai sales in China jumped 36% in the first half of the year, but the company expects them to slow in the second half due to a slowing economy. And yet, two Japanese automakers expect to rebound in the second half. Nissan says sales are back on track. They were only down 1% in the most recent quarter. Toyota says it expects to hit its sales goal of 900,000 vehicles this year in the country, which would be a 7% gain compared to last year. Speaking of sales in China, Tesla is gearing up to introduce the Model S there later this year. The San Jose Mercury News reports that CEO Elon Musk describes the market as a wild card for the company, meaning he has no idea how the car will sell there. Some analysts believe it'll be a hit in China, among the wealthy that want a luxury car that's also environmentally friendly. Others say the car could get off to a slow start because China lacks a charging infrastructure and the Model S is going to be slapped with huge import tariffs because, of course, it's made in the USA. Coming up next, we'll explain why one of the engineers working on the Fiat 500e spent time at a training school for leader dogs for the blind. Here's another great thing about the all-around performance of our Dueler tires. A comfortable, quiet ride. Oh. At Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. Electric cars can pose a problem for pedestrians, and especially for blind people, because they're so quiet. Recently, we learned how the engineers working on the Fiat 500e went about coming up with a solution. Yeah, actually, we had a very interesting time contemplating what should the car be? We obviously went to the very obvious places at first. It should be a George Jetson sound. It should be maybe a big Hemi engine sound, right? But then we started thinking, no, let's come up with something that's going to be very unobtrusive to the cabin of the driver, right? And also something which is going to really get the attention of folks who may be vision impaired. 
So one of the first steps we did is we went down into a leader dog training school in Rochester and we worked with the dogs and their trainers to find a sound that the dogs really would pay attention to. After we kind of dialed in that sound, we started working that same sound into parking environments and alongside busy, busy streets just to make sure that also people would pick up the noise. And we actually think we ended up with something that's really cool. It's a whirring sound from under the hood. It only comes on under 20 miles per hour because the vehicle makes enough tire noise over that to um, let you know that a quiet car is coming. And interestingly, as the federal specifications are being solidified, we found out that we're very, very close to where they want to drive the industry. So I could say that Chrysler, from an independent standpoint, came up with the same solution. They do, they actually perk up and they look right at it. And you know, it's like seeing a squirrel. They just pay attention. And that's what we wanted. We wanted leader dogs to just pay attention to it and stop and look. And that's the intent of the sound. You know, I actually took a recording of that sound home to try it on my dogs and see if they'd notice. No, they never even reacted. I guess it only works on leader dogs for the blind. Hey, before we go, remember our guest tonight on Out of Line After Hours is Bob Lutz. This is going to be a great show and who knows where the conversation will go. So get your questions ready for rapid fire and then join me and the auto extremist Peter DeLorenzo for the best insider information in the business. And that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching and please join us again tomorrow.